What happens when a person dies? There are different opinions. Some say that he who dies goes straight to heaven, hell, or purgatory. Others believe he goes into the spirit world. Some believe that he is reincarnated into a new being. Then there are those who think it's all over. Others say that the dead know nothing until the day of resurrection. Who is right? What does God say? What is the Bible's answer? If a man die, shall he live again? This is the question of many. The human beings are considered to have three parts, but this is not really the case. The human being is an individual unit, body, soul, and spirit. By saying that he has three parts, we should be indicating that these three parts can operate in isolation. In the next few minutes, you will know what you were never told about the soul and the spirit. The word soul, etymologically speaking, comes from the Hebrew nefesh an expression that is reflected 755 times in the Old Testament, with different meanings such as life, person, animal, or living thing, corpse, spirit, will, and heart. Orlinsky of the College of Hebrew Union in an article published in the New York Times newspaper on October 12, 1962 says that the word soul is an inaccurate translation of the Hebrew word nefesh. Nefesh is the person himself, his being. The soul or being came into the existence when God breathed the breath of spirit of life into the body he created. Soul is a synonymous with life. Person throughout the Bible and never represents existence outside the body, or an entity apart from the body. In keeping with the idea, many scholars agree that it will be more correct to say that a certain person or a certain animal is a soul, and not that it has a soul. The Bible puts it in this way, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. God did not give man a soul, but by joining the breath of life with matter, he became a soul. Rafael Montesino, in his analysis, what happens to us when we die states in the New Testament more often the Greek word pushai, which is equivalent to nefesh, is also translated as life and person. You can find this in your Bible. Life came into existence when God united the dust and the spirit. Before this moment, Adam did not exist not even in a spiritual sphere. The word spirit in the Bible is translated from Hebrew word ruach, which means breath, wind, vital element, mind. Similarly, in the New Testament, or the Greek word pneuma, which comes from the Hebrew verb nek, to blow, to breathe, is used with denotes, breathe, wind, spirit. These expressions never denote 
an intelligent and conscious entity of capable of existing separate from the physical body. Dictionary BA defines spirit as the principle of life that animates humans. While the word he in Hebrew, nefesh, meaning soul, denotes the individuality or personality. Ruash, spirit, refers to the spark of the vital energy that is essential for individual existence. Ruash appears 377 times in the Old Testament, and in most cases is translated as a spirit, wind, or breath. It is also used to identicate vital vitality, courage, bad temper or anger, disposition, moral character, and the basis of emotion. In the sense of breath, the ruash of men is identical to that of the animal. The ruash of men leaves the body on the occasion of death and return to God. The equivalent of ruash in the New Testament is pneuma, as with rawash. There is nothing inherited in the word pneuma that indicates an entity in man that can have a conscious existence outside the body. In passages such as Romans 8.15, 1 Corinthians 4.21, or 2 Timothy 1.7, and 1 John 4.6, Neoma describes attitude, disposition of mind, or state of feelings. It is also used for various aspects of personality. As with Ruash, the Pneuma returns to the Lord when He dies. When God breathed the breath of life, Pneuma, into the body He had formed with dust, of the earth, it began to function. The breath of God did not introduce an additional element. Its fusion was matter activated in life. It was there, as already mentioned, that the man became a soul, that is, a living being, a whole. We cannot in any way separate the being. It is not a body and a soul. It is a unit. When the breath of life leaves man, man dies. It has been said, and rightly so, that the death is the inverse of life. In Hebrew, the expression gawa is used, which indicates to expire, to surrender your spirit. This is to say that the exhalation of the breath of life. Once the person exhales, time does not exist for them until the breath of life returns at the time of resurrection. This change will happen as a blink of an eye. The word spirit in the Bible has two connotations. One is spirit of life, and the second is rational spirit. In the letter case, Paul used it thus, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your spirit, soul, and body be reserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence the recommendation, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Within this context, Everett F. Harrison in the Dictionary of Theology 208 emphasizes in the two testaments it is the spirit of man that is the source of his deepest thoughts and intentions and the son of God must renew his spirit if he is to serve God in a way acceptable before his eyes in this sense the spirit represents the part that allows us to communicate with God that is the mind or reason the above description allows us to better understand biblical authorology, which is beneficial for the correct interpretation of the Holy Spirit in relation to the subjects that has and is presented.
The Bible answers, For the living know that they shall die. The dead knew not anything. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is not perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Your feelings die. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day, their thoughts perish. His children come to honor, but he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. They know nothing, not even about their loved ones. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The dead cannot praise God. What is death compared to? Jesus compared it to a dream. These things said he, and after he saith unto thee, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then the said to his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How by Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken taking of rest in the sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Jesus said that they sleep. That is, they are unconscious unto the awakening in resurrection. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the water fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and drieth up, so man lieth down and riseth not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awaken, nor be raised out of their sleep. Man, he cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. Life is like the flower that is cut, or the shadow that faints. There is glorious hope for those who will die having been faithful to God. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And the promise, full of hope, for those who die, having been faithful to the Lord, is found in Luke 14, 14. And thou shalt be blessed, for thou shalt be recompensed as the resurrection of the just. The patriarch Job knew that sooner or later he would die, but he hoped that he would see God in his flesh not in spirit. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall foresee for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not another. This is what the Bible says, but maybe what they told you was the universal lie that has and continues seduce most people today. It's the same lie that Serpent told Eve. And the Serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For nearly 6,000 years, 
Satan has been preaching that this lie, which has been believed by the most varied cultures, the worship of the dead exists among the Egyptians who placed furniture, food, and valuable treasures in the tombs of the pharaohs. Most indigenous people also practiced many rituals in this regard. But let us note that today millions believe that the dead are already enjoying eternal life or are currently suffering the sorrows of purgatory or hell. Contrary to the clear biblical statements, Satan continues to preach his great lie, Thou shall not surely die. Despite the evil one's deception, the Lord does not forget his children, and in one way or another will make his truth known. And they that shall be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. The immortality of the soul is a component of the Babylonian wine. This is what they have never told you.